Dr. Mohamed Mounir. He's a virologist at Lancaster University. Great to have you on the news hour once again. Um, this is a disease that has infected thousands of people uh, in, in so in few weeks. In, such a, in a few weeks, do you think scientists understand it? Well, I mean, this, this disease is just uh, less than a month history and has never been uh, known to the humanity before. And it has spread it in all dimensions, not only within China where it has started, but also overseas. Uh, so th this definitely has a huge impact onto, um, onto the international community at this moment. We uh, didn't know about this virus uh, particularly. However, we knew uh, quite a bit about the viruses that are cousins to the, this uh, Wuhan coronavirus, such as SARS and MERS. Mm -hmm. so basically Based on those preparations, some of the elements have been mobilized uh, to sort of diagnose this one and to uh, sort of contain this. However, a okay. lot more need to be done, particularly for this coronavirus. And uh, as you say, it's a month old. Um, we have a team of scientists in Australia looking at a lab-grown version of the virus. Uh, are you confident that they could develop a vaccine? Well, uh, growing a virus in the lab have few advantages. Uh, first, in order to uh, make a vaccine, you need to have a live virus, and then you can use that genetic information to make the, the, the vaccine or the better diagnostic assays. So if you want to isolate a virus uh, taken from a patient, that is a tedious, pro tedious process, and it takes uh, quite a bit of time to really adopt the virus into the cell culture in the laboratory. And having a synthetic version of the virus has so many advantages um, because you can use a ready-made virus to not only make a vaccine, but also reconsider your diagnostic assay to make it more sensitive and better adopted. Okay. Uh, another advantage that uh, this uh, uh, discovery could add into is that there are laboratories which does not have a b basic infrastructure to grow the viruses. So if you have already made, okay. that would be very much helpful for them to consider that but, one for their inventions. But as you're speaking, I'm thinking, how long will this take? Because look at just from last week, the numbers have just jumped so dramatically. I mean, I don't think we have time, do we? Uh, well, making a vaccine um, available is really a lengthy process. It takes minimum um, six to eight months to make a vaccine available and to be to be applied in, in, in the human because there is, there is a procedure that first need to be made, second, it need to be tested in animal for safety um, purposes, and then it need to be applied in human. So at this moment, I, I don't consider uh, that vaccine is a choice. The, the important thing at this moment to contain this infection is to apply all those control measures and, and put uh, all the information infrastructure required globally to sort of contain and detect effectively this, this infection. And uh, you talked about the cousins of coronavirus. How does the coronavirus compare to its cousins, SARS, the common flu and other family members that I may not know? Yeah, so um, until now, uh, within this one month, we have more than 27 different uh, sequences, which are the genetic makeup of this Wuhan coronavirus have been collected around the world. So we have a possibility now to compare this Wuhan coronavirus confidently with the uh, MERS and the SARS coronaviruses. So if we directly compare these two um, uh, coronaviruses, uh, this Wuhan coronavirus is more than 80% similar to the SARS coronavirus. So genetic makeup uh, is pretty close. And also looking onto the the disease uh, clinical signs, which are respiratory arrest, uh, and also the disease uh, spread pattern. So th all of these parameters are indicating that both these viruses are pretty similar to each other. And then there, there are possibility that the overall infectiousness and the future impact of this Wuhan coronavirus wouldn't be significantly different than what we have seen in 2003 with the SARS coronavirus. Dr. Mohamed Munir, always a pleasure to have you on the news hour on TRTWL. Thanks so much for your time.